Welcome everybody to this Imprint Enterprises and Cognex webinar presentation on Cognex Logistics Technology Overview. And I would love to have you ask some questions. If you have any at the end, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to turn it over to Bob Conti from Imprint, who's going to kick us off today. Bob, how you doing? I'm doing well, Brian. Thank you very much. And good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone viewing today's webinar, and thank you for your attention. My name is Bob Conti, president of Imprint Enterprises, and today I'm very proud to have Kyle Kralka from Cognex to discuss Cognex's logistics technology overview. Before we move into our presentation, I'd like to introduce Imprint Enterprises to those that may not be familiar with our firm. Imprint was founded in 1975, and since 1990, we've been furnishing on-demand label printing systems and AIDC products and services to clients in North America. We're privately held and currently have over 2,000 customers. The companies you see here represent a subset of our customer base. Some of these customers have been customers with Imprint for the 32 years that we've been in the industry. Imprint's product set can be broken down into a few different subsets, the first being hardware and software. Imprint has risen to top tier status with Zebra, Honeywell, Siegel Scientific, and Cognex. Our product mix is on-demand label printing systems, rugged and industrial mobile terminals, both handheld and fixed mount scanners, machine vision systems, and RFID solutions. The next segment is printer consumables or printer media. For 32 years, Imprint has been furnishing label printer media to customers in the Fortune 50 on down to startups. We stock over 750 different sizes of labels nationally and over 50% of our label revenues are custom sizes or configurations. We also do regulatory labeling such as UL, CSA, specialty products such as integrated forms, RFID labels and tags, as well as prime labels. Imprint's professional services portfolio has continued to grow over our 32-year history. We began by deploying and servicing on-demand label printing systems and bartender installations, but have grown to offer SOTI's mobile device management platform, wireless site surveys, application development and deployments, mobile device deployments, machine vision deployments, and in 2020, we launched our IM2 remote support services. Now I'd like to segue into today's presentation, Cognex's Logistics Technology Overview. Kyle, the floor is yours. All righty, thank you very much. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate everybody making the time here. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bob and to Imprint for having me in today. So my name is Kyle Kralka. I'm the uh, local logistics sales engineer. Uh, I've been working with Imprint actually for uh, close to eight years, uh, which is how long I've been in the industry here, solving different barcode applications. So, uh, you know, just a real quick introduction on Cognix as a company. If you aren't familiar with us, uh, we're actually the global leader in machine vision and uh, barcode uh, applications. We've been in business for over 40 years. Uh, we have actually closer to 30,000 customers at this point. We're a global company. Um, and we actually crossed the uh, $1 billion threshold last year in uh, revenue, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we like to kind of, you know, talk about that. We are a publicly traded company, but really kind of what that leads into is, you know, kind of where we're going as a company, right? So 15% of that revenue in the last slide goes back into R&D every single year. And you can see how much we've been growing over the years. And really it's been leading into a lot of new technologies as we look at, you know, the industry and how it's evolving and different applications that we're solving in the industry space. For Cognex, we have four main growth drivers. There's a lot going on in the world, right? But, you know, really when we look at, you know, where's the growth um, within these segments, it's really, you know, these four that we see here up on the screen. Uh, logistics, deep learning, uh, 3D uh, applications, as well as industry 4.0. You know, touching on each one of these um, growth drivers for us, logistics is far and away our fastest growing market. Um, you know, it's a lot of demand driven by uh, what we kind of call the Amazon effect, right? Um, and really it's, you know, the big retailers of the world investing heavily in automation. Um, and they're often turning to Cognix for machine vision and barcode applications to really transform their supply chains, enable faster delivery, reduce dependency on seasonal labor, and really these days overall labor because it's so hard to find. In addition to that, deep learning has become a huge tech, um, technology for us. We've been able to um, really leverage this in applications where, you know, previously applications would struggle in a traditional machine vision environment. Uh, it's really an emerging technology with significant potential to expand the boundaries of what machine vision can do. Uh, it's really one of the most exciting uh, developments in machine vision in the last 20 years. 
Deep learning enables machine vision to solve challenging applications that previously were only capable by a team of human uh, visual inspectors. Uh, we've really grown the application space within deep learning uh, through the acquisitions of our Vidi systems and SUA lab, as well as um, some additional improvements that we're making as we continue to expand this portfolio. In the area of 3D technology, we're solving a lot of applications where height and volume measurements are required. Uh, we launched our uh, 2D and 3D high performance area scan system back in 2019. Uh, we've been expanding that technology considerably as well as uh, this past week actually, we've released new capabilities within that same technology to now do things like clear spot detection for print and apply application, or actually dimensioning entire palettes and being able to give you that dimensional feedback. And of course, like most companies, right, we're very focused on industry 4.0. Um, how can we bring more data out of our solutions and make everything smarter and more capable? How can we leverage the applications that we're deploying to basically give you more data on how everything's performing and where you can make improvements within your facility? Overall, Cognizant has a really broad range of products designed to help customers in their uh, industrial machine vision and um, industrial barcode applications. Broadly speaking, we have two major product categories, vision systems and industrial barcode readers. But within those spaces, we expand quite a bit further, right? So we have 2D vision app, um, vision solutions, uh, like you see here in the middle. Let me enable a pointer here. Our 2D vision cameras, which we can use for traditional applications, such as reading uh, text on a package, or we can expand up into something like our A1000 to get dimensional data. We also have all of our fixed mount and handheld barcode solutions as well. Cognix does offer solutions really across all industries, everything from automotive to logistics and everything in between, um, except for aerospace. So really wherever you go, you'll probably see our solutions deployed across all different types of applications in all different industries. For today's purposes though, I really kind of want to focus on where we spend our time in the logistics space. So the main places that we spend a lot of time solving applications and uh, increasing performance is in retail distribution centers, e-commerce uh, fulfillment centers, uh, parcel and post, as well as grocery fulfillment, airport baggage handling, and intro to logistics. In terms of the applications we sell, and we'll kind of go through these in more detail, it's really kind of broken into a few different categories. Uh, broadly speaking, scan tunnels is a large solution that we offer, but that goes a lot further than just a tunnel. Uh, presentation reading, which, we've, uh, which we also call hands-free reading. Um, we'll spend a little bit of time on that and the improvements that it can bring to your facility. Print and apply verification is a big aspect of what we do, making sure labels were applied correctly and the correct label was applied. Side and top reading for um, tracking packages throughout a facility. Tote scanning as well as pallet and dock door scanning to be able to uh, look at entire pallets like you see here. All this technology leverages our image-based barcode reading technology. Where this is really nice is everything that we use is solid state image-based, meaning it's not, we get read rates of over 99.9%. .9%. We have no moving parts, which means we have a mean time for failure of over 200,000 hours, and we get image feedback. These are all really, um, really large leaps forward from uh, old laser technology with moving parts that would fail within three to five years or being or having a no read and not knowing why we had a no read. So moving into some of these technologies and solutions, well, um, let's start out with our scan tunnels. So scan tunnel really kind of encompasses anything that is a single or multi-side solution where packages are coming through a certain location and we're gonna scan a known side. Um, in terms of our scan tunnels, we use uh, one of a couple different technologies to be able to read these um, packages that come through or totes. Typically, we can handle up to very high speeds, um, up to 700 feet a minute, and eliminates the need for manual positioning of packages. A few videos I'll show after I turn off my pointer here, just to kind of show some of this technology. So the one that you see here is a three-sided tunnel. We're looking at the two sides as well as the top, and you can see these packages are very close to each other. We intermix totes in there and we're able to catch every single code coming through there. As you can see by the green indicator ring on the reader there. The next one I'll show is actually a five-sided solution. So we're catching barcodes on any of the visible five sides here at a pretty high rate of speed. 
These are all um, justified to the uh, side of the conveyor. So it makes our life just a little bit easier because there's a pretty um, wide range of products coming through here from large boxes all the way down to poly bags. And those are moving through at a pretty good rate of speed. And again, we can handle upwards of 700 feet a minute in terms of conveyor speed, as well as pretty short gaps if needed. That uses our Dataman 370 and 470 technology. We'll actually get into a little bit of that technology later on in the presentation. Uh, but that's kind of our mid-range to higher end readers um, paired with either integrated or external lights. And then we can pair them with, um, with mirrors as well if we need to reduce the footprint of the overall uh, scan tunnel solution. You can see in these two applications, it really doesn't protrude much beyond the actual uh, conveyor line that the packages are being conveyed on. Next, we have our pallet and tote scanning solutions. Uh, we've seen a lot of this, uh, especially in the uh, pallet scanning side, where previously we were using quite a few different readers, where now we can use just a single system paired with um, our high-speed steerable mirror, which uses uh, voice coil technology, so very different than the old traditional laser technology, um, giving us a much longer uh, overall usable life, as well as much uh, quicker movement of the mirror itself to give us different fields of view all through one device. You can see the animation here. In applications where we're using these, we typically are eliminating uh, applications that previously used four or five readers, and we now use just one, uh, making troubleshooting much easier and overall cost to deploy much, much less. Here we have a tote scanning application, uh, probably one of the easiest ones that we can do. Um, usually these are you know, known locations, um, and we'll just be able to, you know, basically put a single reader on there. Again, no moving parts, very easy to set up. And then we're able to catch on the fly without stopping as well as be able, being able to hand damage, handle damaged codes. This is one thing we've seen a lot in the field, uh, especially with applications, right? Because they're using barcodes that are typically used over and over and start to introduce damage. Uh, laser readers will you know, very quickly uh, start to struggle with damaged codes. Typically it leads to having to replace barcodes very often. Uh, with this technology, we can, um, really extend the life of those barcodes without having to have as much uh, planned maintenance on there. Another technology using that same uh, reader type is our zone reading cameras. Uh, this is a really cool technology because we can have a very, very short working distance and we can pair it with an integrated mirror or uh, a very small external mirror. And then we have the ability to uh, work within about a one to two inch um, area and basically position a reader in there to be able to handle those totes or packages as they're coming through the area. Another big trend we've seen is uh, this space right here, handheld replacement. Um, over the years, we've you know interfaced with a lot of different handheld applications, but we're seeing a big trend in the industry away from handhelds, um, really around the ergonomic safety standpoint, which um, I'll show on the next slide, kind of some of the drivers behind that. But, we have uh, a platform called the same um, platform actually as the uh, tunnels are 370 and 470 series, but it actually integrates with a different lighting system that allows us to autofocus in real time and read over a very large area of depth of field. We'll play a couple different videos here, just kind of showing some of the capabilities here. Uh, first and foremost, it has a really nice laser uh, aiming system. And we also have green operator feedback so you can visually see within the field of view when you're getting a good read versus when you're not getting a good read. Um, this is our integrated high powered torch and it has a built in distance sensor on there. It uses our high speed liquid lens technology, allowing us to auto focus to wherever that distance sensor lands within two milliseconds. So extremely quick, faster than pretty much any line speed. We have different types of uh, lighting setups we can use on there. Uh, this is a quick snapshot of our software. We can turn on different banks of lights. But really nice, this al allows us to see where the camera is looking, allows an operator to very easily place it right within the field of view. And then it also allows the camera to autofocus between different positions in a very short amount of time. And this is over a two meter span and it's able to autofocus in real time between those two positions. You can also see the green operator feedback here. So this way he knows he's getting a good read as he goes across a very wide range of barcode presentation. We can handle extreme perspective as opposed to just having it positioned in a single spot every time. And everything on there is field interchangeable. 
So whether we need to change a light, change a lens or change a cover, all these parts are readily available and it can all be changed in the field with just um, a simple screwdriver or a set of Allen wrenches. And you're up and running with a new configuration in just a matter of minutes. Showing this in a little bit more, uh, a little bit less of a marketing video, more of a real world uh, scenario. I've got two other videos here showing uh, what this looks like. So a quick note on the lights is they can stay on constantly so that way we don't have flashing. Um, the little bit of flashing you see in there is uh, just uh, video frequency. But you can see she's going at a higher rate of speed. She's grabbing every single one of those codes and she doesn't have to slow down, position a handheld reader, position a product. She's able to just grab that as she's moving through the workspace. Another video, this one, you can see that again, the green operator feedback, and he's going through a huge range of area, which I think this is pretty indicative of most applications that we'll see. Um, all operators are not built the same, right? We have some who are um, you know, on the very tall side, some are on the short side, sorry. And now this, with that solution, you don't have to worry about uh, where the system is focused because it can handle going through the entire range. Some of the big drivers of this technology, um, you know, is really throughput per, per station. You know, there's a lot of different products coming through different stations. Um, obviously, you have to have a solution that's flexible for it, as well as the variety of boxes. You have a variety of sizes of operators. Um, operator uh, scan accuracy. If you have to be moving around a um, handheld, there's a lot of, you know, additional time positioned with that, as opposed to just being able to move through a standard cadence. And then really the big one that we're seeing is this last point down here, associate well-being. Um, and really this kind of leads to having the operator have two hands on the package at all times, as opposed to having a hand on a package and a hand on a barcode reader. So some of the big keys with this is, um, you know, really quick snappy reading on these codes. You know, we're able to move through at a full rate of speed and grab these uh, reads as we're moving through. We have a large reading zone. Um, we're not you know, stuck with just a small field that we typically get out of a handheld reader. Um, it's really high resolution, so it's a large field of view. Again, you're not stuck with just a small area to scan it. Uh, the operator feedback is outstanding. We can actually do more than just the green flash um, within the field of view when we get a good read. We can actually turn on a separate color, like maybe blue, to tell you, hey, I'm not within the range of being able to read the code. So that tells the operator I have to move it up or down. Um, and then again, the ergonomic safety side of this, we've seen nonstop, and every time this is talked about, we get a lot of heads nodding on this one. Um, there have actually been lawsuits at some of our bigger customers for people, um, operators specifically, who are using handhelds and having back issues or um, elbow issues from having to kind of balance the bo box in one hand and a handheld in the other, where this, again, allows them to have two hands on the product at all times, and it's much safer and a much quicker process. In terms of what's running under the hood on all these systems, there's a lot of software on here that allows us to be able to handle a variety of barcodes. Um, at the end, I'll actually fire up some software and kind of show you guys um, just the variety and ease of setup on here. Uh, but we have a lot of patented algorithms on here that allow us to decode a variety of different codes. And we're talking about a distribution center with a ton of product coming through and a, a variety of labels coming from different suppliers. This becomes really critical because not every code is applied perfectly, especially when it's coming into the facility. There could be things like wrinkles on there or damage um, or low contrast because somebody else hasn't maintained their printer. This allows us to have a much, uh, a much stronger read rate all within the same technology. As the industry starts making a bigger shift towards 2D barcodes as well, we have a lot of technology in here for 2D capabilities taking it beyond just, you know, the traditional 1D. We're starting to see, especially if you look at any Amazon package that arrives at your house, you'll see codes that look like this. We can get much more data in there. There's repeatability. And we're starting to see this shift across a lot of different uh, industries, even especially within the logistics space that are now starting to include 2D. 2D has a lot of developments behind it. Um, we do a lot of 2D barcodes within our manufacturing space. So you'll see, um, you know, the ability to handle either damage or really small codes and still get very reliable reads. These are some really good real world examples here of you know just really challenging codes we can read. And again, when we're talking about a distribution center, the name of the game is getting the packages through and making sure that we get every single read. We wanna you know, minimize operator intervention and being able to read codes like you're seeing here on the screen 
either applied over an uneven surface, read at an extreme perspective, or damaged boxes. Being able to read these codes and keep the line moving is really critical. One of the other technologies we're using in there that allows us to read really challenging codes is our HDR and HDR plus technology. Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with HDR. Um, it's on you know, pretty much most camera phones at this point, uh, most television sets. But the way traditional HDR works is it acquires multiple images, typically an underexposed, a standard exposure, and an overexposed image. And it stitches those images together, basically pulling out the best contrast levels of each one in that combined image which is what you see down here in this highlighted image. We have a new patented um, algorithm that allows us through single acquisition to acquire an image with even greater contrast by looking at neighboring pixels and making adjustments in real time. In terms of what that does in our application, besides giving it a really nice pretty picture, it allows us to have a much greater depth of field using traditional HDR, which is single acquisition. We get a 20% greater depth of field or a greater change in height of product. And using HDR Plus, we're actually able to get a 30% greater depth of field. So a much, much bigger increase. Kind of some examples of what those images look like in terms of being able to see that contrast. But beyond that, we're able to handle much, much faster line speeds because when we're adjusting that contrast within the image, we actually require less light to get a much better image as we're moving product down the line. So using HDR or HDR plus, we're able to go considerably faster on line speeds, as well as handle a much greater uh, variation in height of product. Kind of a brief overview of uh, some of the technologies we're using here. Um, and really, we're going to kind of focus more on the on the fixed mount side here. Um, give you a quick overview of the family. So in terms of our, our value line, we have our Dataman 70 series. It's a very small um, footprint camera. Uh, everything again is image based here. Um, these are good for your know, hand presentation applications, scanning in a work badge or um, positioning within uh, a work cell to scan um, codes manually as they're coming in. Our Dataman 260, uh, kind of a mid range um, reader. This one's been around for uh, quite a while. It's a workhorse. There's a lot of deployments out there. Um, it'll solve a lot of applications. Great for tote reads or side reads. Um, pairs very well with a small mirror. Our Dataman 280, which comes in a position is basically right above our 260 there. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more on that one, but this opens up a ton of new uh, technologies and new applications for us. And then on our high-end side, we have our uh, very flexible 370 and then our most powerful 470 series reader, which uh, has that HDR plus technology and allows us to handle very fast line speeds as well as very complex applications. A brief overview of the Dataman uh, 260 series. Uh, it's a very flexible system. Uh, you can see we have our uh, angular design here. There's actually two nuts under here that come off and allow us to flip this into a 90 degree configuration. And then we have flexible lightning and optics, which can be field interchanged, as well as a liquid lens for autofocus technology. Moving up into our 370 series camera, this is the one that we'll use on either uh, scan tunnels or on the hands-free applications. Uh, we have a lot of technology in here. We have a nice wraparound indicator ring back here on the camera that'll show um, visually if it's a good read or a bad read. We have our uh, operator feedback lights here, our green light for good reads, blue light that can be configured for anything we need, uh, field interchangeable uh, covers, lights, and lenses, our high-speed liquid lens technology, and then we can also pair this with a C-mount lens if we want to use an external light for much faster line speeds. And then our 470 is really our workhorse. Um, the three, 280, 370, and 470 all have gigabit ethernet, so we can transfer full resolution images at rate. Uh, it has our HDR plus technology, um, flexible lighting and optics. We can interchange all different types of um, lighting and lensing options on there. It has a multi-core processor, so we can actually handle overlapping triggers uh, for the very fast line speeds, as well as a lot of uh, different feedback um, options from a performance standpoint. Again, just kind of showing some of the flexibility here. Um, it's really kind of geared towards a flexible environment applications changing. So whatever the application is designed for, you know, if something changes down the future, we have all different types of lenses we can plug in there. Uh, actually a much greater range than what you see here on the screen. Um, so if, if we need to reposition this camera in a different area, or we have a, an additional box or package that's been introduced, 
we can either move the camera further or closer and just swap out the lens and protect that investment. We also have different light colors. Uh, this is really critical, especially if we're talking about a hands-free application uh, where operators presenting a package to be uh, red. You know, typically we'll pair um, you know, a red light with a camera for something like a scan tunnel. But when we're working with this in a space with an operator, that red light can be kind of irritating. So we can go with a white light, which really more closely mimics what we experience in a traditional environment. Different covers. So if we have you know shiny labels or anything like that, we can put a polarized cover on there to be able to handle the um, the shine and the feedback there. Again, different operator feedback and that um, that laser grid that's projected into our field of view. And again, all those have our HDR and HDR plus technology. Spending a couple extra minutes here on our Dataman 280. So this is the newest introduction to the Dataman family. This really covers a wide range of products um, and it's, it has a lot of flexibility. So really it's our highest end performance in a compact package. So we have decode speeds that typically would rival what would previously be our high-end solutions. It has all the latest algorithms and then all of our uh, latest advanced image formation technology. So our HDR technology, our high-speed liquid lens and our dynamic autofocus. We have gigabit ethernet in here for quick uh, image offload. Uh, we have our USB-C port on the back, which actually allows us to connect to the reader and do maintenance without having to connect over ethernet and actually plug into a factory network. We have a reader hosted web HMI. So we can actually go to the IP address of the camera right in a web browser, and we can actually see what's going on. We can look at um, you know basically performance of the reader, uh, look at no reads, make changes if we so choose. We can also lock out that technology in case we have innovative operators in the field. Um, and then we also have our multi-reader sync capability, which will allow the readers to talk and output all the results through a single camera. Again, everything's interchangeable in here. Um, if we order it to only read 1D barcodes, we have the ability to do a field upgrade to add 2D capability later. We have Ethernet IP and Profinet built in, as well as quite a few other industrial protocols. And a single device can either handle 24 volt power or PoE, depending on what's required for the application. Taking a little closer look at the camera itself, we have either a straight or right angle configuration. Uh, we have two different uh, lens options set up for the high speed liquid lens. Uh, we either have a 16 millimeter, which is more zoomed in or a six millimeter wide angle. We have um, a few different lighting options, a few different covers, as well as a C mount setup if we want to use an external light. This also has a multi-core processor, a high speed liquid lens, uh, image max and HDR. Again, the latest algorithms on there to decode really challenging barcodes. Uh, it's built for our edge intelligence system, which gives us feedback on performance of the overall factory. We can group readers together and see how individual lines are running, as well as look at dashboards, flexible communications, and interchangeable lighting and lensing. Pretty wide range of applications that this will solve in terms of um, you know, where we typically uh, are looking to use this, app, uh, this reader for applications. You know, either you know direct part mark codes, um, you know, high speed lines with um, 1D barcodes, uh, reading multiple codes on a single package. Uh, if the barcode is positioned reliably, we can read barcodes right on the palette. And this is also going to be positioned in the future for uh, hands free reading as well. We'll have a new light coming out here shortly for it, allowing us to handle um, some of that same um, dynamic autofocus capability. Quick grid just kind of showing um, decode times of the Dataman 280 versus our previous premium products. Uh, it's about you know two to three times faster than uh, all of our previous gen products on pretty much every barcode type. So it's a much, much quicker uh, decode overall, as well as leveraging that HDR technology and our high-speed liquid lens. So then I'm actually gonna exit my uh, presentation, hop over to our software. So I want to take a couple minutes and show basically what our software looks like from maintenance side and a setup standpoint. Um, I think it's really powerful to see kind of the capabilities of the reader and how quickly you can basically set them up and how quickly and easily it is to make changes on the fly. So this is our data man setup tool. Uh, this is right on our website. There's no cost to download it. Um, you can download as many times as you want. You can put in uh, virtual devices if you want to be able to see the different menus. And then it'll show you any readers connected across your network here. So I've got a Dataman 280 set up at my desk and I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna take me right into the reader itself. 
So I'm going to go over to my system tab and I'm just going to quickly reset this. So now I'm back at a factory configuration. So this is basically an emulate, you know, me pulling this reader right out of the box. So I'm going to put a quick 1D code in front of it. And without having to do any kind of changes, we're immediately reading that code. Now, if I look at that image, I'll make this a little bigger here. Well, even though we're reading the code, you can see it's pretty washed out in terms of the lighting. Uh, it's kind of being flooded and it really isn't too, too cre uh, clean or crisp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna quickly optimize my brightness. So you can see we get rid of that really bright hot spot. And then I'm gonna also gonna optimize my focus. And within about two seconds, we have a much better overall image. And what I'll do is I'll also take this up to full res just so we can really see what that image looks like. Beyond that, I can come down here and I'll turn on my HDR technology. And what's really nice about this is overall the image doesn't, looks like, doesn't look like it changed very much, but it actually has a much greater contrast threshold and we're acquiring it in a much quicker format. Without having to make any other changes other than tuning our lighting and tuning our lensing, we can go through and now read a variety of damage codes. So we went from that nice, good reference code to this really low contrast code. The barcode itself here is really tough to see, but we're still able to read it very consistently. And if you look at my decode time, we're still decoding it very quickly. Next, I've got a very damaged and out of focus code. It's also some perspective and we're able to pick that up without making any additional changes. We have a damaged 2D code. Nothing needs to be changed within the software. We have a short code. And what I may actually do is I'm gonna put this into a repeating trigger just to kind of show some of the capabilities here. And now what I can do is I can pick up that code and we can actually rotate it through the field of view, kind of simulating a less than perfect application of a label. We can also go to something like a noisy code where there's a lot of background noise and it still picks it up consistently. I have a pretty big variety of different codes here codes with voids in them. Again, pretty good real world examples. Of course, these are bench top, but we've seen all types that are exactly like this in the field and they read very consistently out on the production line. All that's done really with minimal change other than tuning our lighting and tuning our lensing. Within the software, we have a lot of other things that we can change. So we can basically fine tune our application just going through our application steps after we've optimized our image, we can go into our code details and enable or disable certain barcode types to determine what we're gonna specifically read on our line. If we're just looking for a code 128, we can disable everything else. And now when I present a different type of code other than a code 128, that's gonna show up as a no read. And now we'll only read once I present it with a code 128. We can, if you don't know what the barcode type is, you can do what's called automatic symbology detection. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a code in front of it and hit yes. And it's just gonna start reading and it's gonna tell me what type of code it found. And in this case, it's a code 39. And it will only enable code 39. If we need to get more specific in terms of what we're doing here and how we're filtering out barcodes, we can actually do JavaScript on here and we can actually um, put in certain, um, certain conditions such as I need a uh, barcode that is 12 characters long that begins with one, two, three and basically count everything else as a no read. Further in, we have our application details. We can set our trigger type, set a delay. Uh, we can set a maximum exposure if we wanna stay within a specific line speed. We have an exposure assistant here so we can determine what our application is. So in this case, if I select in motion, 
it's going to give me a dynamic window here, basically guiding me through how to set my exposure to ensure that I stay within the parameters of the application. I can format my data. So if I want to output this data in a specific way, I can do it right here in the software. Um, typically, everybody has a requirement for no read. It could be a bunch of question marks. And now when I trigger it, we go from nothing in the no read field to a bunch of question marks. We could specifically want to say no read. And just with a couple clicks on the keyboard, we have it set up for whatever the application requires. If we need to specifically format the data for an application, we'll just enable what the barcode type is, click on our hyperlink, and we can format our data. So we can output a substring, we can output a full string, we can enter leading text. So we'll just do a quick leading and terminating text. And now we'll trigger. after we have the full string in, and now I have my leading text, my data string, and my terminating text. Again, typically this type of thing would require quite a bit more coding within the reader. We can handle it all here within the software. We can configure our inputs here. Uh, we have um, quite a few inputs. We have flexible inputs and outputs, as well as we can determine what the buttons on the reader do, as well as disable them, again, in case you have very innovative operators who love to help your operation stay running. And then on the communication tab, we can um, basically determine how we want this system to communicate, if we're gonna, um, how the IP address is gonna be configured, if we're communicating over an industrial protocol, such as Ethernet IP, we can enable it here. Um, then we can turn on our web HMI from here as well. So if we wanna be able to view this within a web browser, we just click enable, and then we can open up this uh, camera in the uh, web HMI by just typing in the IP address of the reader itself. Within a few minutes, we're able to really quickly set up the Dataman 280. We're able to read a variety of codes and then we're able to fine tune our application. Again, it's a very simple software to use. We actually have training uh, videos on our website to walk through how this software is um, set up and formatted. If you ever have questions on it, there's also a really nice uh, Q and A tab for whatever uh, screen you're on within the software. So if you kind of forget, all right, what am I doing on the code details um, tab? Click on Q&A over here, and it'll bring out a bunch of different uh, commonly asked questions and answers for them if you click on them. I personally still use this quite a bit in terms of, you know, just having different questions, like what are the trigger types, for example? Click on Q&A, and it gives you a really nice long explanation of what each trigger type does. And that's on every single screen within the data man setup tool. And then once we're done, we hit save settings, and we're ready to deploy our reader start reading codes and move on to something else within our day. So if anybody has any questions, I'd love to open it back up here and kind of run through anything that anybody would like to clarify any further. Kyle, great presentation. We do have a handful of questions already. If somebody else has one, please put it in the chat window or the Q&A window and I'll get to it. The first one was about the setup tool. Is there any fees associated with that at all? That's a great question. So there's actually uh, no cost for the setup tool. It's on our website, Cognix.com. If you go to the support section, click on data man support. We have all of our data man setup tools listed there from conception of data man setup tool to the latest and greatest that came out last week. And is that a individual program that's downloaded to a computer or is it web-based? Uh, so it's an uh, individual program that's downloaded to the computer. Uh, but once you're initially configured, you can actually make adjustments through our web HMI. So once you know you make adjustments on there, you can actually set up and uh, configure everything through WebHMI going forward. Excellent. And the other question that came in on that too is, does that software configure just one at a time or can you pull up different uh, units and configure them concurrently? Mm, good question. So let me actually hop back into the setup tool to answer that question. So what we can do is if I go to my system tab, I can actually save my configuration and just load that into another reader or I can start tapping my readers across the top. Or better yet, if I have you know basically 10 lines that are all the exact same, I can just print this configuration code here, scan for a hard reset, scan in these settings, hit this code to save and reboot the reader, and I can redeploy the exact same camera over and over without ever touching the setup tool. Excellent, great answer. 
The next question was, how do we choose which camera do we need? Absolutely. So we've got a huge range of cameras and, you know, overall products for different applications. Um, and that's really where, you know, bringing imprint into the mix and contacting basically the expert on this um, really kind of helps determine what we need for the application. So we've got kind of a whole list of questions that we'll run through, you know, just between line speed, uh, min and max box size, min and max barcode size, and we'll guide you right into the best one, as well as show you scan maps to show you, yep, I can read within this range, this is my minimum package size, this is my maximum package size, just to kind of let you know, hey, yep, we're getting the most for it, as well as we're right on the edge, or we've got a little bit of flexibility for future expansion. So another question came in too, and it was about um, special considerations. And they were talking, I think, about lighting within a, the environment. Is there special uh, shrouds or anything that you have to do to get the lighting right for the readers to be optimized? Yeah, great question. So really, you know, that's another thing we'll do when we're kind of determining the reader is, you know, we'll specify the right lens and the right light for the application. Um, I've seen so many unfortunate examples of scan tunnels out in the field with, you know, big giant pieces of cardboard positioned over them, which is, you know, just terrible A, from an aesthetic standpoint. And B, if you're making this type of investment, you should never have to make any other adjustments to it. So what we do is we'll typically specify the light for the application that's required. Um, and that's, you know, to basically accommodate for the package style as well as the line speed. And then we'll also um, specify a coordinating bandpass filter, which only views that wavelength of light. So if we're using a red light, you're only going to see red light. And if you shine a giant flashlight on there, you won't see any change in the image, which gives us a rock solid deployment. Excellent. And this next one, I think, is for Bob. Bob, do you have any ideas on how people can work with imprint to better configure a system for their needs absolutely our technical team is trained in cognex products and then in partnership with cognex we really have uh, an a to z approach in terms of the initial specification of what your project and requirements are although they all the way through doing a proof of concept and then doing a final deployment uh, anywhere in north america excellent so with that being said, that's all the questions that I have. Bob, do you have anything else to add today, or how can people get a hold of you to learn more about this? I would say uh, call, email, or visit our website. Uh, really, Kyle hit the nail on the head at the beginning of the presentation. Really, print and apply and palette scanning and line scanning are three of the most common applications that are needed. A vast collection of our customers are doing some form of print and apply, and that scanning and validating uh, from a quality perspective is really integral into the investment that our customers make. So please reach out to us, talk to an expert, and uh, we would love to show you a Cognex product uh, in your facility and how it would work uh, in your application. Excellent. Gentlemen, great presentation, Kyle. Thanks, Bob, for hosting. And we appreciate everybody's time and attention, and we look forward to seeing you at our next Imprint and Cognex webinar. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.